Racing simulator buffs haven't exactly been spoiled for choice when it comes to affordable driving wheels on PC. While serious racing fans might lean toward a Fanatec setup or something similar, Logitech and Thrustmaster are the two most popular brands as they tend to offer more affordable packages. Logitech's G25 intrigued many when it arrived eight years ago with the 270mm leather-wrapped steering wheel, a set of stainless steel pedals and a separate shifter unit for $300. Three years later, the company replaced that model with the G27, which was based on the G25 but brought new features such as the use of helical gearing instead of straight gears, resulting in less noise and better steering response. Having been so long since Logitech first introduced the G27, we weren't surprised a few months ago when its successor was announced. Technically, there are two successors, the G29, which is compatible with PC, PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4, and then the G920 is for the Xbox One as well as PC, the previous generation G Racing Wheel was never compatible with Microsoft's consoles. Logitech says both wheels are built for longevity and that only quality materials have been used, though it has to be said that the new G29 and G920 don't look or sound radically different to the G27. With the exception of all the new buttons on the wheel, the G920 is similar to the much older G27. The steering gear housing is pretty much exactly the same and the hardware inside, such as the helical gears, are the same as far as we can tell. The G27 featured six small red buttons on the wheel which weren't that easy to access as they sat below your thumbs. The G920 improves on the number of buttons offered in their position. Lastly we drove the wheel with Project Cars. Slightly Mad Studios and Logitech have worked together on the development of this wheel, so to no surprise, the game not only recognized the wheel and shifter, but had all the buttons mapped nicely. Force feedback in Project Cars felt good but in faster cars the on-center dead zone became quite apparent. This made it difficult to accurately place the car on track and hit your marks. We tried to adjust this dead zone out in the in-game settings but that didn't help either.